Hi everyone, welcome back to online classroom Jeku Tio. In this video, we are going to start with chapter 4, Human Health. And the first topic is infectious and non-infectious diseases. First of all, what is a disease? A disease is when an abnormal condition happens to our body or mind. Okay, and it causes discomfort, difficulty to function, or stress to a person. That is a disease. Well, there are two types of disease. Infectious disease and non-infectious disease. For infectious disease, it is caused by pathogens. In a little while, we'll talk about pathogens and what they are, okay? Um, it is infected by pathogens directly through mediums and vectors. This is what we will talk about big part of this video, so bear with me for a little bit. And for non-infectious diseases, they are normally caused by genetic factor or lifestyle. Some examples of infectious disease will be tuberculosis, flu, ringworm, tinea, leptospirosis, dengue fever, malaria fever, and Zika fever. And for non-infectious diseases, we have examples like cancer, hypertension, that is high blood pressure, diabetes, all right, asthma, cardiovascular diseases. And infectious means it can go from one person to another person. It can be transmitted. And for non-infectious diseases, it cannot be transmitted from one individual to another. And I want to bring your attention to all this example here. Do not be afraid to go near to these patients because they cannot uh, infect you with the same disease. Whereas for the diseases over here, the infectious diseases, you might want to stay a distance for a little while. Well, how are infectious diseases spread? First of all, we need to know what is pathogens. They are spread by pathogens. As I promised earlier, we'll talk about pathogens here. So pathogens are organisms that cause diseases, all right? And all forms of virus are pathogens. And some bacteria, protozoa, uh, fungi, and also worms, they are all pathogens, all right? They cause disease, they make you fall sick. And there are four ways where these pathogens can be transmitted from one person, the one that is sick, to another person who is healthy and then be infected. So the four ways are air, water, contact, and also vector. I want to bring your attention that not all microorganisms are pathogens, okay? There are certain bacteria that is in human body that is actually useful and helpful for us and it helps us with our health. So not all microorganisms are pathogens. First, let's look at airborne diseases. Airborne diseases can be transmitted through two different types of transmission, that is droplet or dust. For droplet, the pathogen containing droplet sprays from mouth and nose. So when the person who's sick Okay, can spray those droplets by sneezing, coughing, talking, yawning, or breathing. How about dust transmission? That is when the person who is sick, they start to spit. And their spit or their saliva dry up and form spores and then they are spread with the dust in the air. So how can we prevent airborne diseases? Well, number one, when you sneeze, cough, or yawn, close your mouth and nose, all right? Especially if you're sick. And do not spit everywhere. It is not nice and it is very, very unhygienic. It can cause the diseases to spread. And avoid to be in a crowded place and also ensure that your living place get enough sunlight because the ultraviolet Rays in the sunlight can actually kill diff uh, certain types of microorganisms in the air. And some example of diseases that is spread this way through the air is tuberculosis, flu, SARS, H1N1, chickenpox, and right now everyone know COVID-19. That is why um, the government and the healthcare offices has been telling us that we need to wear our mask when we go out. We need to avoid crowded place. We need to make sure that we are clean and all that. Why? Because COVID-19 is spread through the air. 
Secondly, the waterborne diseases. This happened in areas with inadequate water supply and also poor sanitation. For example, when uh, a toilet is built over a river and a person that used the toilet, the fecal pathogens will enter the river and pollute the water. And then someone else, if they use the polluted water, okay, if he drinks it, if he uses it, he can get infected by those pathogens. Another where waterborne diseases can spread is through floods. And how do we prevent it? Number one, okay, we add chlorine into swimming pool and also water supply system, meaning the water in swimming pool and also the water that come out of the tap water at home. There is already added chlorine in it and the function of this chlorine is to kill bacteria and also we need to build toilets with good sanitation and we need to keep the toilets clean right and boil drinking water properly by boiling the water we kill microorganism and we need to often wash our hands with soap especially after we use the toilet some diseases that is spread through the water as cholera, typhoid, and also amoebic dysentery, okay? And how about the diseases that is spread through contact, meaning you touch, it, it, it is spread through touch, physical contact? Well, the, the most common one will be ringworm and tinea. These are the uh, skin diseases, as you can see from the picture that is shown here. So they are transmitted through contact, uh, it is caused by fungi and also how does it spread is maybe you accidentally touch the skin of the infected person or you wear the clothes of an infected person that will cause the infections to occur some other diseases that is uh, transmitted through contact will be sexually transmitted disease like syphilis, gonorrhea, and also AIDS. All right. So um, for AIDS, it is caused by HIV virus and it is transmitted through sexual uh, relationship and also blood and syringe sharing. So these are all uh, diseases that is spread through contact. And finally, we'll look at the fourth way a disease can spread that is through vectors. But what is vectors? Well, some pathogens are transmitted through animals. And this animal that transmit the pathogens are called the vectors. We'll look at some example. So for typhoid, the pathogen that causes typhoid, all right, the bacteria or the virus that causes this disease is called Salmonella typhi. All right. And the vector is cockroach and fly, meaning this animal here, the vectors here, cockroach and fly, carry the pathogens, all right, and spread it to other people. Well, the symptoms of this disease will be fever, intestinal bleeding, and also red rashes. And how, how does it get infected through contaminated food and also water? Next will be dengue that is spread by the pathogen named dengue virus and also Zika or Zika virus, alright? So the pathogens is the virus and the disease is dengue or Zika fever. And both of these diseases are spread through the vector of Aedes mosquito. For dengue, the symptoms will be joint pain, fever, headache, and also watery eyes. How is it being infected? Well, mosquito bite. How about Zika? The symptoms is kind of similar to dengue, fever, rashes, joint pain, and also conjunctivitis. And the way of infection, of course, is mosquito bite because it is spread by the vector of Aedes mosquito. Let's look at a few more examples. Malaria, this is the pathogen Plasmodium malaria and it is spread by a type of mosquito named the Anopheles mosquito. The symptoms will be shivering, fever and sweating and it is normally infected through mosquito bite because the vector is a mosquito. How about leptospirosis? Uh -huh. The bacteria or the pathogen that causes this disease or this fever is Leptospira sp bacteria. Alright, it is spread by rat. 
and the symptom is fever. All right, the most、uh, obvious symptom is fever, headache, and muscle pain. And the way of infection contaminated soil, food, and also water. And finally, one more that is common is cholera. The pathogen is Vibrio cholera bacteria, and it is spread by fly. All right, the vector is the animal, and the bacteria is the pathogens. All right, we have to be be clear of this two term. Pathogens is the bacteria or the actual、uh, animal that cause the disease, and the vector is the animal that carry the pathogens. All right. So the symptom of cholera will be diarrhea and vomiting. Normally, you will have tummy issue, and the way of infection contaminated food. And water. So, how do the vectors spread these diseases? They do not cause the disease. They spread the disease because they carry the pathogens. So, let's take a look at one of the common vectors. That is the mosquito. Well, what happens is when a mosquito that already has the pathogen, all right, the mosquito already carry the bacteria in its salivary glands, suck the blood of a person who's healthy. Then what happened is the when the mosquito suck the blood, it will secrete saliva. It will、uh, have some saliva, the mosquito saliva, to prevent the blood from clotting, and the infection starts spreading in that person because the mosquito saliva carry the pathogens, and also. Uh, if another mosquito bite the person who's already infected with the disease, then that mosquito will then carry that virus or bacteria to another person and spread it further. How about fly? Well, it's simple. A fly lands on the dirt, all right, that has pathogens on its legs and body. So the pathogens is at the fly's legs, and when the flies、um, actually Stop or land on your food, then it transmit the pathogens to the food, and the pathogens then enter the body of the person that eats the food. The food is already contaminated, so it is very easy for vectors to spread this disease if we are not careful. So we need to always be sure that we are clean and we are careful to protect ourselves. Okay. Next, let's take a look at the mechanism to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Well, it is divided into three different stages. On the first stage, the primary stage is when we focus on a person that is healthy. We focus on the person that is not sick yet. Okay. So number one, very important, improve our health. How do we do that? Very important. We need to keep ourselves clean. We need to improve on our own personal and family hygiene. Cleanliness of the place that we stay, all right, that is very important. Number two, we can strengthen our body's defense system by the way we live, by the way we eat, and also by taking the vaccine to different diseases to protect ourselves, to strengthen our body defense system to the particular disease. And frequent health checkups will be very important as well, so that we know our health status and to maintain a healthy lifestyle. To always、uh, to exercise, to have a balanced diet, and so on. So that is the primary stage where we make sure all of us are healthy. Our health is improved. That will prevent us to get infectious diseases easily. Number two, we are looking at the patient, the one that is already sick with the infectious diseases. So what we do is we need to determine the transmission of infections through active and passive case detection. That is what our country is doing right now. We are detecting. Oh, where are the new cluster of the COVID nineteen? We need to track all those close contact, get them quarantined. This is all secondary stage. All right, giving early treatment to the patients and also to separate the patients from the others so that they don't further spread the disease. On the tertiary stage, this is when we need to destroy the vector,、uh, the, the the animals or the vector that carry the disease, controlling vector population. For example. Um, for dengue, we need to destroy the breeding and hiding place of Aedes mosquito. 
all right, for gain to kill them, and force the law by issuing compounds to honor of dirty food premises that encourages the breeding of the vectors. For example, the mosquitoes, and also we need to protect the host. All right, for at tertiary stage, we focus on destroying the vector, the pathogens, and to protect the host. So we use mosquito nets, for example, or mosquito coils. And to wear thick clothes. These are just a few examples, alright? Well, that's all from Jekutio in this video where we take a look at the introduction of different types of diseases and how some infectious diseases can spread. I'll see you in the next video where we will look at how our body fight disease, okay? Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.